Hey guys, it's Striker Train on here again. Today I am going to do a video three wide in one video. So basically, here are the comedian questions. Check on the there below. If they are, why should we not dig our nose? Why do parrots mimic human speech? And why are shrimps humped? Okay, so let's start. First of all, the first question. Why shouldn't we dig our nose? Okay, so y'all know digging our nose is a bad habit. It's also very disgusting, but what is the real threat? What's the real threat, if you're wondering? Well, the answer is digging your noses will cause the hairs on your nose to fall, and without that, your nose is left unprotected because the hairs can block the dust a little bit, and then the rest of them is taken down by mucus. But still, and plus, because when you pick your nose, you will hurt the nasal mucosa and it will affect your sense of smell and you'll also cause the nose to bleed. Furthermore, furthermore, if you didn't cut your nails yet, but no matter if you cut your nails or not, there are still a lot of bacteria hiding beneath your nails, especially when you don't cut them. And thus, then the bacteria will be flowing to the nose and then it will cause a, a damage to your nose. But it's more than that. And that's not and that's not all. And there are many blood vessels and nerves in the nose, making it very sensitive. And that it can affect your the bacteria can affect your brain too. And if it does that, it can seriously endanger your life, you know. And thus so therefore, this is the danger triangle part of your nose because it is full of blood vessels and nerves. It is also located near our brain and so it will be very severe if you get infected. That's how the bacteria flows from the blood vessels all the way to the brain, all the way up to your brain. And digging your nose is very unhygienic. So if you guys always pick your nose you should change this bad habit of yours just in case only if you don't pick your nose everything will go fine for you okay so let's move to the second question why are shrimps pumped okay but the shrimps are actually humped for the reason despite it only being seen in their appearance because shrimps are weak and they're easily threatened by other aquatic animals. And when they swim, they pull and push their segmented abdomen and their fan-shaped tail to propel themselves backwards at a surprisingly fast speed. So it makes them look hum, basically. So when they're in danger, they flex their back and flexi after flexing their back, leap quickly away and they thrash the water with their tail to escape. And this is an important method of self-defense, so they bend their body to protect themselves. And this is called water propulsion. And, you, and this can also be in squids and cuttlefish too. They also use this method to escape from their enemies. Okay. So, we're going to go to the last question. Why do parrots mimic human speech? We all, you guys really all know that parrots can mimic human speech. But besides the parrots, the common hill mina and the crested mina, some minas are kind of, by the way, minas are kind of perch, sterlings and they belong to the perching birds family. They can also mimic human speech when they're trained, basically. But, what is the ability of parrots? So let me tell you, because the strength is the vocal organ of birds, 
The structure of a ferret's strings is more developed than the other birds and it's almost similar to the human larynx. Well, our vocal cords, of course, because the, the syrinx is the vocal organ and the larynx is our vocal cords that help us speak. Moreover, your tongues is also well developed and by the way, tongues help you to speak properly. So it's soft and large, gain for and flexible, which enable them to mimic human speech. After training, they can speak like humans, you know. But there are things to know when training a pair to speak. But there's something fun facts. Because birds don't have a larynx that's vocal cords and they have a syrinx, this means birds don't have vocal cords, so they use their syrinx to use for produce noise instead of using vocal cords like other animals and us too. But so let me tell things to note. We must foster a close relationship with the parent first. Make sure there is always sufficient food and water for the bird. The cage must be clean and the parent should be groomed regularly. This is the way to gain a parent's trust. Once the, the parent's trust is gained, it will follow your command and listen to your speaking. So the best time to teach a parent is to speak in the morning. A parent that is in good spirits will think clearly at their good name. So teaching them to speak in the morning is more effective. Moreover, fresh air in the morning produced by the early waking of the trees basically power up so the parents can breathe more oxygen and if you have enough oxygen, you'll be healthier and more alert. Okay, so learning environment should be quiet too. A quiet environment is required when teaching a parent to speak. If it is noisy, the parent's attention will be affected. When teaching a parent to speak, start with easy and short before progressing to harder and longer words. When teaching a parent to speak, we should say the words clearly, correctly, and slowly. Do not break up the sentence, and the sentence must have a meaning. Okay, so if parents were trained properly, they are called as the dean of the stars of the animal kingdom. Well, cling. Okay, so that's all I have for today. So I hope you enjoy this video, and next time you'll see my other three wise in one. Bye, guys.